uh, why microservices? Um, there's basically, I mean, the biggest need for microservices is really um, an organizational issue more than a technical need. So there's rarely a technical need to split stuff up, uh, except for if you grow too big and you have too much scope for one team to handle, so that you need two teams and then you need three teams and then you have 10 teams and um, all these teams need to be managed. And all these new teams um, need to contribute um, features um, in their own pace and uh, uh, you want to empower um, the teams in a way that each team can fully own the delivery process, ideally. And so there's the question of how big should a team be? That's been answered by Jeff Bezos in a way that um, if you can not feed a team with two pizzas, then it's too big. So um, uh, at least at Amazon and also at lots of other companies that adopt that kind of mindset, um, teams are very small. They're like, like five, six people that um, own a couple of microservices, uh, at least one, and that contribute to that microservice and that microservice or those microservices then contribute functionality in a microservice architecture. So basically having lots of microservices is just a function of um, uh, a good way of, of scaling up your team. And then you have basically Conway's law that states that um, every architecture is then is, is reflected uh, or technical architecture is reflected in the organizational architecture and vice versa. So um, looking at the microservices then gives you an idea of figuring out how teams collaborate and create value. So that sounds that sounds great. And I mean, there are, there are tools to then dig into how microservices interact with, with each other. Um, but um, the difficulty arises from um, the added complexity of microservices. So instead of having just one monolith and one function call, and you know, those are the entry points um, and those are the exit points, and we know how to Somewhat, somewhat test um, uh, the monolith, so which, which is the, the kind of opposite paradigm of we have one big application. Um, you have more things that can go wrong, um, and especially uh, can go wrong in a security issue where you have um, microservices um, depending on having inputs formatted in a special way. So basically, one microservices relies on the information. Uh, being checked or some kind of security sensitive information being checked by a preceding microservice. Uh, but since you can just plug and play them together, there's no reason why this microservice shouldn't be exposed um, uh, to the world directly or um, this um, some some filtering, some validation uh, changes in one microservice that has effects on uh, what some other microservice is doing. And especially if you have these highly decoupled, empowered, um, teams that have full ownership over their microservice and they test their services and then there's kind of some some integration and some smoke test that uh, that tests for functionality um, before deployment uh, which is how you usually set it up um, then it's really hard to, to security assess um, this interacting web of services testing for security is is always hard but is especially hard uh, when when you tackle mic tackle microservices, just because the interactions and the interdependencies um, are much unclearer and less known um, than you you have it uh, in, a, in a monolith um, setting where you can look more easily into core stacks and stuff like that. 